哇，这个商场好冷清啊！呵呵，这么大个商场，人都没一个。啊，看看，这店铺都是空的啊！我天，这店铺都空的。啊，里面是空的，里面都是空的。我去，难搞啊！现在的经济啊。嗯，一些小孩就到下面去踢球了，呵呵，空空荡荡的这个商场。This is a shopping mall located near the subway entrance of Jiaofen Road in Shanghai. According to the photographer, this mall receives very few customers. It is surprisingly quiet. One by one, shops have been forced to close down, including the fresh produce supermarket. Even restaurants are empty. The fourth floor of the mall, which was originally planned to be a KTV, a karaoke TV, has had to close due to poor business. International 估计可能国内是恢复了，但是国际的航班应该还是没有恢复到正常状态。啊，这些店全关着啊，这些奢侈品店啊全部关门。One Beijing resident reported that the commercial scene at Beijing's airport international departures is extremely bleak, with almost all the shops having gone out of business, including luxury boutiques. Some of the seals on the stores show dates from October 26, 2022. Which means many shops have been closed for over half a year. Now only Hermes remain open, along with one or two duty-free shops. The only options for food are KFC and Starbucks. The man added that he had seen news about many foreigners leaving China, and judging by the situation at Beijing Airport, it seems true. He believes the main reasons for the slump in duty-free shopping are a significant drop in international travel and the current weak purchasing power. Another man who recorded a video of his visit to a shopping mall in Hankou Bay, Wuhan, found that nearly 70% of the physical stores had closed down. He believes that investing in shops for rent yield is generally a losing proposition. He disclosed that in the first half of this year, these shops in Hankou Bay were still open, but now almost all of them are closed, with only a few struggling to keep afloat. Yet another Guangzhou resident shared that since the Chinese New Year, particularly after the May Day holiday, there has been a wave of shop closure in the bustling old town of Guangzhou. Some even shuttering en masse, which puzzled him. This resident said that logically, the economy should be improving and businesses thriving after the lifting of the pandemic restrictions. But for some unknown reason, the tide of store closure is growing stronger, and this trend is limited to Guangzhou. He heard from friends in Foshan that the situation is the same there. Shenzhen and Dongguan are experiencing even more severe closure waves, with some cities becoming ghost towns. The Day of the Festival, originally planned to have a day of festival, the店里 is very busy. In the morning, when you come to work, you come very early. But until now, the evening is only four o'clock. The store is not open yet. Really, this sound is too much for my expectation. Let's look at the situation. 现在一个人都没有，四点钟刚刚好，外面的行人也非常的少，不知道什么情况。端午节这人都去了哪里了 ？The three-year pandemic and economic downturn have led to a slump in domestic demand. Consumers are unwilling to spend, and many physical stores have already been losing money throughout the pandemic. Struggling until the end of the pandemic and seeing no hope, they have chosen to close down. The wave of closure is not only affecting small brick-and-mortar stores. Recently, a number of large established supermarkets in Beijing, Shenzhen, Shuzhou, Fuzhou, and other cities have not been spared. On June 24th, after nearly 15 years of operation, Beijing's Eon International Shopping Mall announced its closure. Eon Mall, located in Changping, Beijing, opened in November 2008. As the first shopping center of the Eon Group in Beijing, it was once seen as the starting point for the development of large Japanese retail businesses in China. 
However, in the past year, Eon have been gradually withdrawing from various parts of the country. Another Eon supermarket, located in Chaoyang, Joy City, Beijing, had already closed in 2022. A Beijing netizen lamented, "With large supermarkets closing one after another, the real economy is truly in decline." Another netizen said, "It's somewhat sentimental. Before the pandemic, the place was crowded with people. During the pandemic, it was deserted." And after the pandemic, stores have been closing one by one. On June twelfth, the popular supermarket Wushan Liangfang at Yuejiazui in Wuchan District of Wuhan City in Hubei Province officially closed. June eleventh was the last day of business, with its shelves already cleared out. Large supermarket China, China Resources Vanguard Jiangxing Road Store in Shuzhou City of Jiangsu Province also officially ceased business on June fifteenth, ending both online and offline services. This store was bustling with people when it first opened in January twenty fourteen, but those days are gone. The China Resources Vanguard Wanjia Pinghu Store in Jiangxi City of Zhejiang Province also issued a notice of closure. Ending online and offline services on June tenth. In the wave of supermarket closure in mainland China, Carrefour China has been gradually closing stores over the past one or two years. On June tenth, the first Carrefour store in Shenzhen and the second in China ceased operation. This twenty-seven-year-old store, located in Nantou area of Nanshan, has been a mainstay. The Carrefour Mailian Dao store in Beijing and the Carrefour Fanyuan store located on Zhongguancheng South Street also posted closure notices. The Shanghai Chenshan Road membership store also suddenly ceased operations in May. In 2022, Carrefour closed 58 stores in China and 33 stores were closed in the first quarter of 2023. As of the end of March, Carrefour China had only 114 stores left. But judging from reports from various places, this number is still decreasing. A knowledgeable source revealed that friends in Shanghai, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and Wuhan told him that the retail and physical store business in these area is bleak after investigating the stores in person. When the pandemic restrictions were first lifted, businesses, including retail and services, some restaurants and hotels, were doing well. However, starting around the Chinese New Year, while the catering industry is still managing to operate, the situation for hotels and the retail industries is extremely bleak. The operational conditions of many large commercial entities, supermarkets, and hypermarkets are much worse than before. Almost as if still in the pandemic period, the real economy is becoming increasingly difficult to sustain, with many physical stores in second and third tier cities shutting down. Huizhou is a major developed city in the Pearl River Delta of Guangdong. Now, upon visiting the area near Shuimen Bridge in Huizhou, one can see that many shops have closed, some of which are seeking tenants. Some analysts suggest that the continuous closure of large shopping complexes is a microcosm of the Chinese economy, reflecting a long-term economic slowdown. In addition to the bleak businesses of offline physical stores, China's online consumption has also declined significantly. Major shopping festivals in China, such as e-commerce giant JD.com's Six One Eight Shopping Festival and Alibaba's Singles Day. Usually serve as barometers of China's consumption. Chinese e-commerce platforms typically encourage consumer participation by offering discounts and rewards. During this year's Six One Eight Shopping Festival held by Chinese e-commerce platform, fierce competition ensued for traffic. Various merchants were forced to engage in a price war, hoping to boost sales amidst weaker than expected recovery in consumption. JD.com took the lead in March, launching a multi-billion-dollar subsidy war and promoting a double compensation for overpayment slogan. One of the five main strategies of Taobao for the 618 festival was to focus on price power, giving prominence to the Taobao Good Price channel on its homepage during the festival. China's short video platform Kuaishou invested 10 billion yuan in boosting platform traffic and 1 billion yuan in product subsidies, launching big brand subsidies in live broadcast rooms, product pre-sales, and broadcast room vouchers. 
Douyin launched the super cheap store, while Pinduoduo's homepage highlighted limited time second kill, and 9.9 yuan special sales. Paired with the slogan "No need to compare," dropped to the bottom. According to reports from mainland media, one brand's merchant lamented, after the pandemic was lifted, the competition among e-commerce platforms became fiercer. Everyone unanimously chose to go low in price, and platform operators are closely monitoring each other's operational mechanisms. The Associated Press cited analysts as saying that although shopping platforms like JD.com, Tmall, Taobao, and Pinduoduo offered billions of dollars in discounts, the consumer market's recovery from the impact of the pandemic is still stumbling. Sean Rang, founder of the China Market Research Group. CMR stated that due to a combination of geopolitical issues, lingering pandemic-induced weakness, and domestic politics in China, Chinese consumers' confidence remains weak. In recent months, consumers have been highly sensitive to prices, constantly seeking discounts and price reductions. For the past few years, merchants have been providing discounts for an extended period due to the pandemic. Compared to previous months, the discounts during the 618 shopping festival weren't significantly better, making it unlikely for consumers to purchase more. Recently, China's National Bureau of Statistics released economic data for May, showing a collective weakening of key economic indicators. In May, China's industrial value added to the designated large enterprises increased by 3.5 percent year on year, down 2.1 percent points from the previous months. Total retail sales of consumer goods increased by 12.7 percent year on year, down 5.7 percent points from the previous month. Nationwide, industrial producer prices increased by 4.6 percent year on year and 0.9 percent month on month. In May, the National Urban Census showed unemployment rate at 5.2 percent, unchanged from the previous month. The youth unemployment rate reached a new high of 20.8 percent, marking a record high since the data has been regularly released in January 2018. Moreover, from January to May, private fixed asset investment witnessed its first negative growth within the year, with a year-on-year decrease of 0.1 percent. The last time private investment experienced negative growth was in 2020. Recently, foreign institutions have lowered their forecasts for China's economy. Goldman Sachs released a research report on June 18th, lowering China's GDP growth rate estimate for 2023 from 6% to 5.4%. Three major foreign banks also revised down their GDP growth rate estimates for China this year. UBS's latest report revised it down from 5.7 percent to 5.2 percent, primarily due to a weaker rebound in the real estate market and the disappearance of momentum in consumer recovery. Bank of America followed suit, lowering its prediction from 6.3 percent to 5.7 percent, while Standard Chartered decreased its forecast from 5.8 percent to 5.4 percent. According to Bloomberg, senior officials of the Chinese Communist Party recently held at least six emergency economic meetings with business leaders and economists. Sources revealed that senior CCP officials asked attendees for suggestions on how to stimulate the economy, restore confidence in the private sector, and rejuvenate the real estate industry. In response, business leaders and economists urged the government to urgently amend policies and adopt a more market-oriented rather than plan-oriented growth approach. One attendee stated that at a meeting about two weeks ago, senior CCP officials and about ten attendees agreed that more coordinated monetary and fiscal stimulus measures were needed. This insider said that all participants were extremely worried about the uncertainty of the timing and the form the stimulus measures would take. However, analysts say that China's economy is facing a deadlock. The system implemented by the CCP has led to many unsolvable issues, and holding emergency meetings continuously can only be seen as desperate attempts to revive what may already be beyond repair.